Welcome back to my kitchen. Today we're making my veggie packed lasagna. We are a family of four, so not only am I cooking for me and my husband, but my kids. So whenever I can, I hide vegetables in every meal. Let's make our lasagna. I'm gonna put it around 200. If you love garlic, you can do more, but I usually like two cloves of garlic. stainless steel pan, I always recommend heating it up before you put anything on there. If you find that your meat or eggs are sticking to your pan, it probably hasn't been heated for long enough or high enough before you've added food. So I've got that on the heat for a few minutes. One of the things I love about this recipe is you can kind of just use any veggies that you have in the fridge. It's kind of like a leftover lasagna. <laughs> Let's check our pan. This is how you see if it's ready. Then come to the pan. We want to see the beads of water dance on the pan. It's almost ready. See how it's like bubbling? We want them to bead up and like dance around the pan. You'll see in like 50 seconds. See that? That, look, that is impressive. That is, that is dancing. <laughs> I love that sizzle. I've got 500 grams of grass-fed mince here. Cracked pepper. Mixed Italian herbs is really ideal here, but I don't have any at the moment, so I'm just gonna add some thyme to mine. I like to make a well in the middle and we're gonna pop over to the fridge. This is classic mum cooking where I actually don't think I have any normal tomato paste, but we're working with what we've got. This is this is definitely close enough. Pizza, it's basically tomato paste. So you're gonna do around two tablespoons of tomato paste, or if you're desperate, pizza sauce. <laughs> and then I like to saute that in the well without mixing it in with the mince just yet. Before we combine it, I'm going to add a can of crushed tomatoes. This is just a 400 gram can. And then really, you can kind of take it off the heat now because it's done cooking, but just make sure it's all nice and combined. This is when we pack away as we go, okay? We've got this, boom, in our recycling. Done, she's done. Heat off. Clean space, clean mind, clean kitchen, clean food. Love that. Here is where I add my sneaky veggies into the lasagna. I feel like it's like usually a husband and kids thing. They're like, ew, vegetable lasagna. But as soon as you say it's like, no, it's meat and cheese, they're into it. I like to slice the ends off and you want to slice it like lasagna sheets. So quite thin. I love eggplant for this because when it's cooked, it mirrors the texture of pasta. If your kids really despise vegetables, remove the skin because once this is cooked, this will just look like pasta and it will mesh in seamlessly. Zucchini, same rule. If your kids are avoiding it at all costs, then just remove the skin and slice them into thin layers, the same width as our eggplant. I like to use both baking paper and olive oil just to make sure it's not going to stick. Here I'm using a 100% olive oil spray, spraying both sides of the zucchini and eggplant, generously coating with salt and then throwing it in the oven until soft and tender. Okay, let's check our zucchini and eggplant. It is perfect. This is the reason why my kids love this recipe so much and my husband, I'm not gonna lie, probably me as well, the cheese sauce, but we need something very specific to make it. This is a present you get in my family when you turn 21. My mom made myself and my two sisters this cookbook. It says Sarah's recipe book. And it's basically just full of her famous recipes and they're not even ones that she's designed herself. I mean, some of them she's done like this one, oh my gosh. It's called Mum's Sourdough Dip. She's just made that on like a Word doc. But a lot of them are, like this one is from a magazine cutout. So many of these recipes just bring back childhood memories, like Mum's Easy Chicken Pie. She's done that one on Word. So as you can see, this is a very traditional meat and cheese lasagna. From this recipe, we're gonna be using the cheese sauce recipe as our base. You can make this entire recipe gluten and dairy free. It's super easy to swap it out. I've just grated around 125 grams of cheese. I'm gonna get my pan warm. Do not overheat the pan. So even though I'm still using stainless steel, I'm not 
preheating this pan just because it's really not gonna stick. I'm adding butter. It's not gonna stick. I've made the mistake before of preheating my pan so much that I've added the butter and the butter burns and then you have burnt cheese sauce and it's expensive and it's annoying and you have to waste it and start again. So you do not have to preheat your pan. So just slowly melt your 60 grams of butter in a warm saucepan. Our butter is all melted. I'm going to add our half a cup of flour and just continuously stir that together. I'm gonna add around two and a half cups. I'm just using full cream organic milk here. Little dashes whisk together. And you'll see it really starts to absorb and as soon as that absorbs we're gonna add bit more. Now there's two options to add veggies to this cheese sauce. One is very inconspicuous incognito and that is carrots. So you can add two carrots to this. Basically you're just going to peel it and either poach, steam, boil the carrot and puree it and at the end you will add it to the cheese sauce and you cannot taste it, you cannot see it. It really just adds a beautiful colour to the cheese sauce. It looks more like American cheese because of the orange. Now I've done that before and the boys loved it. They had no idea there was even carrot in there. But today I'm going to be doing spinach in mine. So if your kids really hate green, don't do the spinach. But my boys really don't seem to mind that it's green cheese sauce. A little bit of nutmeg. I know it sounds really random, but it really does bring the cheese sauce to life. Now, if you have this ingredient on hand, definitely throw it in the cheese sauce, but don't go out and buy it. Like this is not necessary at all for this. It just adds a more, I guess, bold flavor to the cheese sauce and it's good for you. So I'm just gonna add a bit of nutritional yeast around a tablespoon. Okay, we're gonna add half of our cheese in. So like I said, we have 125 grams of grated cheese. Now, if you feel like it's not tasting cheesy enough, it might be because it's not salty enough. Adding salt is just going to heighten the natural flavors there. good. It's so good. We're going to make it even better with our little veggie inclusion. I've blitzed up two to three handfuls of baby spinach here. If you're adding the carrot, now's the time to add pureed carrot. I place such weight on eating with my eyes. Like if I love the look of a dish, I'm so excited to eat it. And this cheese sauce, I just love the look of it. Look how creamy that is. Okay, last but not least, let's get our pasta sheets. So I've got my zucchini, eggplant, pasta sheets, cheese, Sauce. Sometimes I get three layers of meat, but often I get two. I think I'm very heavy handed with my meat layers. So around two ladles full and I just press that down the bottom. And as you can see, I haven't had to oil my pan. The natural oils in the meat and the olive oil we've already added will help grease up the bottom. Gentle hand, Sarah. So there we go. Gorgeous. A little bit of our cheese sauce. You can be pretty heavy handed with this cheese sauce because there is a lot to go around. So let's go in with our eggplant. Fox is gonna be so excited when he comes home from preschool. This is his favorite meal. I think he just thinks it's like a ball of cheese because the cheese sauce is so rich and beautiful. But what he doesn't realize is he's actually eating eggplant, zucchini, tomatoes, and baby spinach. So you're welcome. We'll go in with our next layer, the bolognese mince. Smooth that out. Amazing. Let's go in with our cheese sauce. Our final layers. Let's go in with our zucchini. This is our grated cheese from earlier that we didn't put into the cheese sauce and it creates such a beautiful crust. We all love multi-layered cheeses. I love the saltiness of Parmesan cheese. We're going to put that in our 200 degrees oven for around 40 minutes. <gasps> oh my gosh, now my whole house smells like lasagna. Oh my gosh, it's so heavy. <laughs> Look at that. Can you hear that sizzle? Can you hear the sizzle? Yes. 
<laughs> I have a new favorite knife. Well, it should be my favorite. I haven't really used it enough yet, but I have an obsession with these Japanese cooking knives. Kurt bought me a serrated one. So this is going to be much easier to chop through that first layer of pasta. Oh, jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. Look at that. Mm, mm, mm. Oh my gosh, look at this glide. Like it's so soft. Oh, you are going to love this. Also, just a reminder that my healthy cookbook, Sunny Side Up, is linked below, so I can't wait for you guys to see that as well and get your hands on it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will talk to you in the next one. Bye. Welcome back to my kitchen, guys. We are making it. Well, he doesn't realize he's actually eating tomatoes, cucumber, eggplant. Did I say cucumber? <laughs>